Hi, this is Gail with Bernina of Naperville, and happy Labor Day. That's right, it's the official end of summer. Now, I am a fall person, I love fall, but you know, I really enjoy all the seasons, but I'm not gonna joke. I am looking forward to whipping out the boots and the leather jacket and, and that kind of thing. Well, I hope you enjoyed making lesson six. We've moved on to lesson seven, and in lesson seven, you are going to love how it is all encompassing. That's right, we're gonna do everything right in the embroidery hoop. Uh, so for those of you that don't have software or a Bernina 790 or 880 plus, you're definitely gonna to wanna to use our rescue file found in the handout. But the rest of you are really gonna love the challenge. So we're gonna start off with software. So let's see how to make this lessons design using the Bernina embroidery software. Here we are in our familiar Bernina embroidery software. So I've opened up our design number 11 this month. As you can see, I've already changed the colors. So now all I need to do is select my design. And now I want to use the wreath making tool. And I go over here into my toolboxes into the mirror merge and choose wreath maker. And then I'm also picking the wreath maker at the number of copies is two. And then I'm just going to spin this little guy around so that these little things just almost touch. And now I'm going to use my magnifying glass and I'm going to left click and draw a box around it to just make sure that they line up nicely like I like them. And now it does. So I'm going to fit to the hoop again. And now I'm going to select all. And I like to do a select all by saying control A on the keyboard. And I'm going to move this into position just so it'll be in the center of the hoop. And now I want to rotate this five degrees counterclockwise. So I'm clicking in this new little box right there and I'm going to say five and I'm going to hit enter on my keyboard and now that straightens up my design. Now I have playtime. So I'm going to click away by deselecting and I want to do one thing here. I want to actually pick a color and I'm just going to pick color number five, this light blue color, or I could go up and pick my Yen Met color if I wanted to do my metallic quilting, but I'm just gonna pick this color. And what I wanna do first is I wanna create a pretty design that I'm gonna use for my feathers. And I'm just gonna start by making sure that I'm lining this guy up in the middle of my hoop and I did a select all. There we go. So now this design is right in the middle of the hoop and I'm just gonna create a feather design right here that I'm just gonna make a one quadrant and then I'll just you know, do another technique to put them in all four quadrants. So let's zoom in right here. I'm going into my toolboxes to my digitize folder and I'm going to use an open object. Now, these are the two most important things that you need to know about digitizing. First, you want to pick your outline and I'm going to do the single stitch outline. And then you want to know that left click makes it pointy and right click makes it roundy. So I'm going to start with a left click and then I'm just going to do a right click, right click, right click. And see that I made the little spine of my feather. And now I'm just going to do a bunch of right clicks to make my first feather. And now the left click made a point. So now I can come back with my, with my right click to make another piece of my feather. And there was my left click to set it. And then right click, right click, right click, right click, enter. Right click. You can notice it also makes a slightly different noise.
And now as I go down here, I'm going to have to use my little scrolly. Here we go. Right click, right click, point. Right click, right click, right click, right click, right click, left click. And then I'm going to hit enter on my keyboard. Now, I want to show you here, I'm just going to get rid of our hoop for a second. But do you see how these little stitches kind of overlap? I did this kind of sloppily. You might want to take a little bit more care with this, but I'm going to just go ahead and adjust my notes. See how I selected my design and then I selected this reshape tool? Well, the yellow squares are where I left clicked, where it's pointy, and the bright tealish blue color are the ones that are rounded. And all I have to do is just move these a little bit and you can see how now it's not looking as sloppy. See that? So this is just a fun way to design and really get something exactly, oopsie, exactly the way you want it. So I'm gonna go ahead and move some of these out of the way. I really like doing this kind of work. It's very um, relaxing. And I want this to be more of a pretty rounded shape, so I'm going to play with this a little bit. There we go. Oh, I love it. That looks great. Okay, and once I make all of those adjustments and go to the selection arrow again, I can actually, let's do the to fit again, just click away to deselect, and look at that. That's really pretty. So now I ended my piece down here. So now I want to make another segment for these feathers. So what I'm going to do, let's zoom in again so I can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to pick my open curve tool or open object tool. And I'm going to left click. And now I'm going to stitch all the way back up the spine. So there's going to be some double stitching on this spine. And now I'm going to create a feather, create another feather. Oops. Now, if you get a node that you don't like, like that doesn't have that little heart shape, you can hit backspace on your keyboard and that gets rid of it. See that? That made that so curvy and pretty. And then right here, I'm just going to end just like that. Now, here's another opportunity for us to select this and to select our reshape tools. Get down in here and make sure that we line up our stitching so it looks really pretty and doesn't overlap and look sloppy. And then down here, if I wanted it to touch the stem, I can move that node. Then I can kind of play around here and get something a little bit more curvy. Ooh, this is one that could use a little bit of work. Um, you can also add a node if you need one, just simply by placing your arrow over the line where you want to add a node and you can add a pointy one by left clicking or a rounded one by right clicking.
Here's a situation where I might want to add a node, and I just did, just to kind of get some personality on this feather. Oops, see, I added a pointy one there. If you don't want that, you just delete. Okay, but I am left clicking and holding to drag those nodes. But now let's zoom out. And there's a feather that I really like. Now I know I'm scrunching in on my design there a little bit. Um, at this point, what I can do is look over here on our color film. I can select color film, and now I have this whole piece selected together. And I, before I start really monkeying with anything else, I want to do a black work run. So that's under edit, and it's this fancy little button here. And what I'm going to do is just pick an entry point by left clicking on it. And what that's doing is it's ensuring that I don't have any jump stitches on my design. And it might put some double stitching in some areas, but it makes it look really pretty and nice. So now that that's selected, I'm going to actually want to just monkey with the size. So I'm going to narrow it just a little bit. I'm going to vis visually try to see my hoop again. So I can see that everything is going to fit down in here. And I'm going to try to place this right on my line there. I really like that. I think that looks really, really nice. So I'm going to select it. And now I'm going to go back to one of my favorite tools, this mirror merge. And I'm going to mirror merge four times to get this to shape around my flower. Ooh, that's not looking quite like I'd like. My little flower's kind of in the way down there. But let's go ahead and do this anyway. <laughs> All right, that's pretty. So now here's an opportunity for us to do a little monkeying. We've not really done a lot of editing, but what I wanna do is select the flower. So see how when I selected part of this flower, the entire thing got selected? That's because this design is grouped. So I'm gonna go back here to arrange and I'm gonna ungroup. Now it's gonna allow me to select Hold down control on your keyboard and click all of the elements with the flower. And now let's move this just away slightly. Like that. And I'm going to take that little design that's right here. I might have to get a little bit closer. That little dude there. I want to take my reshape tool and delete that node. There we go. We're just gonna stick this under the flower. Nobody's gonna know it's there. There we go. I might also need to move this a little bit more. So let's look at it to hoop again. You can also use the arrows on your keyboard. There we go. I'm fine with this. And now I want to do the same thing to the flower down below. So see how I select it and it's grouped? I go over to Arrange and Ungroup. And now I'm going to have to probably do just the same things that I just did up above to this one down below. Yep, see, there's our little, our little something something there. So let's zoom in and deal with that little piece that's there. So we're going to start by selecting it. Go to our reshape tool. And this is where we could even delete these little pieces. Get my start and stop thing there. Delete that. Okay, that's good. 
Now let's to fit. Now this is slightly different than the one that I stitched out in my demo, but that's okay because yours is gonna look different than mine. And now what I wanna do is show you how to add some stippling. We're gonna add the stippling by going over to our digitize tool and our closed object tool, and we're just gonna pick any fill stitch. We're still working in color number five, so now we want to zoom in here and I am literally making a point right there on the satin stitch part and now I'm right clicking all the way down to the other point. And enter. Now that's not what we want. So we're going to select that and we're going to go down here to stipple. Now that is not a lot of stippling. We want to make this much smaller. So we're going to go to Object Properties and we're going to make our stitch length a little bit shorter, maybe two, and our loop spacing is going to be 0.111. And now I want to see what that looks like before I commit. Yeah, I like the way that looks. So let's go ahead and say OK. And now let's go to fit. And look, we have a little stipple spot in there. What do you think? Now we can also do the same thing in here. Closed object tool, fill, left click, right click, left click. Now we have a lot of little jaggedy type points down here. I'm just, you know what, I'm not getting too crazy because it the stipple won't go into this in this great detail. So I'm kind of just, you know, not paying too much attention here. But now I want to get a little bit more specific. Here we go on another curve and now I'm going to hit enter and now I'm going to select that again and hit stipple and now I go back to my little stipple and my measurements were 2 and 0.111 and apply and OK. And now if you were really fancy we could take this design and copy it. I'm doing control C and control V and now I'm selecting this and I'm going to rotate it and see about getting it in just the right spot down here. What do you think everybody? I think it looks pretty good. And so then once you get something that you like, of course you're going to save it and then you're going to send it to your machine. So I'm going to save this as, I'm just calling this demo. And I'm saving it as an art file. But then when I want to send it to the stick, I'm going to put my stick in there and select my write to card machine. All right, 790 plus and 880 plus owners. Why don't we go ahead and give this block a try right in our machine? No software at all. I'm ready to select my design. There it is for this month. And this is pretty easy. You can see here's our cute little design in our large oval hoop, but we wanna make another copy. So what I'm gonna do first is pick our mega hoop, which is right there. And I'm gonna say, okay, or hit the X button. And now I'm going to make a copy. So I can either bring another design in just like this one by hitting the plus sign, or on some of our machines, we have that duplicate feature which I'm gonna use. Now I wanna move this guy down over here and this guy up here. Okay, so now I'm happy with the position of that guy. So now I'm gonna to touch this one and I'm gonna to use the rotate tool. 
and I want to rotate this so that these two little bits line up with those two little bits. So I'm just going to use the 90 degree and touch it twice. Now I'm using my stylus to drag my little stems to almost touch each other, just like that. But I like to do is zoom in. And when you zoom in, you can either use the hand and then that way I can zoom in right on the area that I want to focus on. Otherwise, um, if you did this, you'd be moving your tool around. So you have the hand and you have the little crosses. There is also an opportunity to zoom in even more. And now I can really, really see what I'm doing. So now I want to actually move this guy into position. So I'm going to hit the little cross and then I can either keep touching this with my stylus to move it or I can use over here on my machine, as you know, the top knob goes side to side and the bottom knob makes it go down. And make sure before I start moving it around that I'm out of that rotate screen. So now here I am. And now I'm gonna take my bottom knob and just move it to, oop, just want it to look perfectly smooth, just like that. Now I can go ahead and zoom out and there's my design. Now, it is kind of tilted to the side, so I want to straighten it up a little bit. And over here, you notice our layers. So I'm going to hit the bottom layer so that everything is selected together. And I'm going to go back to my rotate tool, and I'm going to rotate this using my top stitch width knob. And I'm going to rotate it minus five degrees. So I'm turning my knob counterclockwise until it's at minus five. There we go. And now I have something that I could just embroider and stitch out. Now, listen up, everybody out there. There's another way that I did this month's block. As you know, I used the software and I created quilty designs over here and here, and I even stippled in the areas in these um, negative space, or not negative space, but these little like perimeters that are, are um, bordered off there. I can't really help you with digitizing a stipple in this method. So you would use your Bernina stitch regulator like we have in many months to do that. But with this month's block, we're gonna use, if you have a 790 or a 880, I'm gonna show you how we can create a feather right here and just play with it and actually incorporate something that we created ourselves right on our sewing machine in this month's block. And we're gonna do that by going over to our sewing side. My machine's gonna grunt at me a little bit. We don't need to pay any attention to anything it's telling us. And this little button right here is the stitch designer. And I'm gonna just get rid of everything by pressing a clean slate I'm gonna deselect this nine millimeter button and I wanna just pay attention to this drawing board. Now, please keep in mind that there is a tutorial that we have in addition to this on our Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel. The tutorial that we have that's focusing on the stitch designer will kind of give you a little guide about more of these symbols, but what we're gonna use is the zoom out and the zoom in, and we're going to just use the hand and move around a node and create. So let's just get started so you can kind of see what we're gonna be working here with. So I'm just gonna zoom in as much as possible. If I zoom in to see things, you can see the grid getting bigger, but if I zoom out, until I can't hit my little button anymore. That's kind of the screen that I wanna work in. So I'm gonna make a feather. And when I make a feather, I draw my stem first. So I'm just gonna start like over here and I'm just gonna draw a gentle curve. And now I need to move my piece so that I can draw another curve there we go. And then I'm going to move again. Hit my create button and I have to keep 
kind of toggling back and forth between those two things. Okay, there we go. So now that I have that, I'm gonna move it down one more little bit and I'm gonna create my feathers. And I'm gonna go up one side, make my spine, and then go back again. So here we go. It's just like drawing on a pad of paper, except I'm drawing on the screen of my machine. It's time to move it. Time to move it. Time to move it. Okay, so that's where I started. So now I'm going to go and draw on this line that I created for the stem. Okay, move again. Now I'm gonna move it down here and I'm gonna go make them going the other direction. See? All right, and now I can see the whole thing if I go ahead and select OK and zoom out, I can see my feather. And I think that looks pretty darn good. Now, there were some areas on here. I'm going to go back to the little stitch designer screen again. There were some areas on here that were a little bit questionable can see here see how it's kind of jaggedy right there well I can zoom in on a little jaggedy area like this until I see those tiny little dots and those tiny little dots are nodes and if I use this move around tool I can click on a node and I can use my knobs to move them into position so they are not jaggedy anymore And so now I know that this might be very tedious and you might want to choose your battles for which nodes you're going to adjust, but I really do think it's a good option for you if you don't have the digitizing software or if you just don't feel comfortable making something on the computer. But, you know, this is TV time. This is, you know, like talking to the cat time. And see, even on an area like this, if I wanted to kind of move these so that they were a little bit closer together, I can do that. And I can also pick a node and I can go back and kind of cycle through the different nodes like this. I can even go to, this is like a little selection tool. So I can go to a partial select. And as I move up my nodes, just like that, that whole blue section is selected and I can just move the entire selection over if I needed to just move more than, than one piece. 
Um, this one allows me to move one individual node like I've been doing, and this one selects the entire piece. But, you know, like just to give you another example. So let's go ahead and hit my move around tool, and I'm gonna just move this little guy on top of that other line, touch this one, and move it into place, touch this one, touch this one. This will give you a little bit more polished look to your quilt design. And I'm just gonna try to do these ones. Oop, let's go to this one. There we go. And I'm just gonna zoom out again. So you can see how, you know, we kind of cleaned up that little jaggedy area there. But once you get something, and once you like it, it's a good idea to save it. And I've got a lot of different things saved where I've made my own stitches. And now we can take that design and if we go over here to our embroidery, and add another design from our heart folder, our quilting design will be right there. Now you can see that's pretty large, so I could, either go back and draw a smaller one, or I can use my tools to make this smaller. There we go. And now I'm gonna move it, like right about there. And then you know another thing I wanna do with this one? I wanna skew it a little bit. So I'm gonna get rid of my locking mechanism here, and I'm just gonna do this to it so it's not as wide. And now you can see here, I have a little feather that can go there. And I can just polish this off and do something fun. Now, you can do this. Let's get the initial hooping under control. It's time to hoop, but before I hoop, I wanna point out a couple of things to you. You can see here, this is my um, top fabric. It's cut to 18 inches and my batting and my pol my fusible poly mesh is cut to 22 inches. And that's just so, you know, it fits easily in our mega hoop or whatever. And, and I have it about 14 inches wide. If you're going to use the jumbo or the maxi, you might want to cut it just a little bit wider, but, um, but this should be good for you. It's, it's really easy to hoop up this month. I've got the fusible poly mesh, which I've already, you know, Laura started to the back of our batting. Then our batting is here. And I mean, I put in your instructions that I want you to fuse the fusible poly mesh to the fluffy side of the batting. Fluffy side of the batting is the wrong side of the batting. And it's usually just a little fuzzier looking than the top side. And then a little bit of KK2000 or 505 on the batting. And then now we're ready to hoop. And so we're just gonna slip our hoop in here. I didn't even mark it. I'm just kind of aiming for somewhere in the middle like that will be fine. And notice that I don't have that backing material on there yet. And now we're just gonna slip this into position. And then I'm just gonna give a little pull here. As you can see, there's a little, little wrinkle there, but not a lot. Here we go. Tighten up my screws and I'm ready to get it to the machine. So now we're gonna stitch this out and I want you to pay close attention to the part before we do the last color, which would be the quilting. That's the important part. Well, here we are stitching out block number seven. It's pretty easy, you saw me do the hooping, and um, we're just gonna go through all of the colors except for the quilting designs that we selected. Once we get those quilting designs that come up, 
we're gonna stop down we're gonna remove the hoop from the machine but not the work out of the hoop and then we're gonna layer our backing fabric so as you can see here we've got our top fabric our batting and the fusible um, the fusible poly mesh stabilizer which you saw is fused to the back of the batting and we're using the mega hoop but feel free to use your maxi and jumbo hoops as well Here is the uh, red bobbin case that I've threaded up with the metallic thread. So we're going to quilt with this lilac Yenmet thread and it's gonna go in the bobbin and in the top. All right, at this point, you're gonna spray the back of your hoop with the KK2000. Then you're gonna cover it wrong side down with your pretty backing material. Now, this is gonna be put back on the hoop where we have that metallic thread that we've changed out. And uh, we're gonna put metallic thread, the Yen Met on top with the metallic thread on the red bobbin. All right, are you ready for this? So there is our design that we're gonna stitch out. So there's a little bit of stippling, there are the feathers and uh, Hey, this is gonna stitch out in the order that I put it into the hoop. So, with any luck, this is gonna be a thing. So there is our design that we're gonna stitch out. So there's a little bit of stippling, there are the feathers, and uh, hey, this is gonna stitch out in the order that I put it into the hoop. So, with any luck, this is gonna be a thing. I slowed down the speed on my machine and making sure that we're not in jackrabbit mode. Right. I'm really happy with this block. Can't wait to show it to you and some other things we have up our sleeves. All right, you did it. I'm so proud of you. So for the next lesson, we are going to work on either hooping something nine times or three times, maybe even two times with the right hoop. So until then, make sure you check out our Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel. It's easy. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville. And there you can like, comment, and subscribe. And if you want an alert every time we add a new video, don't forget to click the little bell. But, all right. Hey, you've only got a few more hours left of the long holiday weekend. So enjoy it by doing something that you enjoy. All right. See you guys later.